This is called what, Kari? And now you are going to be able to do what, Kaina? If you follow all of our main ideas and notes here and do what we just did together in class, you will be studying and preparing intelligently for the final test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, formulas are kind of big here. Probability, you got to know it. Probability is favorable over possible outcomes. Also, there's another formula in which you have favorable over possible outcomes. What is that formula called? So probability is favorable over possible. What is that other one called? So this really is right here. This is theoretical probability. You're going to see it a little bit later in the notes, but just know that they're the same thing. Number two, read through it very carefully. And number 2A, read through it very carefully. It gives you an example of calculating probability. Before I move on to number three, though, could somebody tell me how many cards are in a standard deck of cards? Could somebody tell me that, Tamara? 52 cards. Do you need to know that for the test? Yeah. Hopefully that's just common knowledge, but you definitely need to know that. Um, conversions are important. This is way back to Chapter 4, so I'm not going to talk much about conversions, but you should be able to convert a fraction to a decimal to a percent. Complementary events. Complementary events. An event and its opposite, right? Impossible, unlikely, likely, and certain. Know what each of those four things mean. Number two, I'm going to go a little bit faster here on this one. Tree diagrams. You should be able to draw a tree diagram based on information given to you. And then sample space. All possible outcomes listed by name. You actually have to list them by name to be considered a sample space. The fundamental counting principle determines the number of outcomes, right? Moving on. Independent events. This formula is huge. If you don't know the probability of independent events, you will not do well in the test. If you don't know what an independent event is, an event that has no impact on another event, you will not do well in the test. Number 10 is an example of independent events. How many of each type of card are in a deck of cards? For example, how many kings are in a deck of cards? Four. How many sevens are in a deck of cards? Four. If you replace a card after drawing it, would that be considered, and then draw a second card, would that be considered a dependent or an independent event? Independent. Because the first draw had no impact on the second draw, right? Correct. Okay. Good. So look at the example of number 10. Number 11, dependent events. The formula is pretty much the same as independent events. The probability of A times the probability of B. Here's where the difference comes in. Independent events, one event has an impact on the, on the other, therefore you have to take into consideration that event A happened, right? Okay. So if you draw a king and then a queen, but you don't replace the king, would that be independent or dependent? Dependent. It would be dependent because now the king is gone, right, Jesse? Yeah. Okay, look at the example for 13 for more understanding. There's theoretical probability. It's the same as probability. This is the one that hurt some of my kids in pre-algebra. They forgot the formula for experimental probability which is kind of a common sense formula. Think about flipping a coin. If I want to know, after flipping a coin five times, how many times it lands heads, I would actually keep track of how many times it lands heads, call that my favorable outcomes, and then I would keep track of how many times I did it, which would be trials, and that would just simply be your fraction for experimental probability. Yes? 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 Yes. Yes. Hi, Mrs. Eubel. Hello. It's Jacob Anderson. Yeah, All right, number six, odds. You got both the formulas? Odds in favor, odds against. Oh, by the way, this one right here, it just says odds. That is odds in favor, right? Yeah. This is, it just says odds, but it would be odds in favor. So they will welcome you to listen first. If they want you to calculate odds against Briggs, it will actually say, what are the odds against? Okay. Do you reduce odds? Yeah. If you get an odd like 4 over 96, can it be reduced? 
Yes. Is this another way of writing odds? Look at number 19. This one says, what are the odds against? Then you know to use the odds against formula, which is just the reverse of the odds formula. And number 20 and 21, make sure you look at them. I'm going to stop the video here in a second. They're just examples of problems that you will see on the test. 21A, I think, exists too. 20, 21, and 21A. Okay? Anything else before I stop it?